Hi, I'm Scott Flowers from Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about the Dell PowerEdge R730 and we're going to continue our series. This video is going to be focused on iDrag. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R730 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like, smash that subscribe. All right, so uh, today we're going to continue our series and this is going to be focused on iDRAC, which is your uh, Dell remote access card. Uh, we're going to go over the different options, which are Enterprise and Express, and we're going to show you uh, how to update your iDRAC as a whole, and we're going to show you how to upgrade it from Express to Enterprise. Let's get going. All right, well, let's get rolling. As we discussed, this is going to be um, focused on iDRAC. And in this video, we're going to show you how to identify whether you have Express or Enterprise iDRAC. We're going to show you how to actually update from Express to Enterprise iDRAC. We're going to show you how to uh, set the IP or the static IP addresses, which is what you'll need to do for both your system and the laptop. Um, and then we're going to show you all the different things that you'll need. So I'm actually going to bring someone in to help us with this video, one of our senior techs. His name is Ben. Take it from here, Ben. Hey guys, this is Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you how to update your iDRAC Express license to an enterprise license. So before we start, there's going to be a couple things that we're going to need. First of all, obviously you're going to need your R730. Uh, but you're also going to need an additional system that could be like a laptop or a desktop, just something that you can have close by to your R730. And we're also going to need a switch with an active internet connection, as well as some ethernet cables. We're going to use these ethernet cables to connect the separate system and the R730 together. And we're going to use this to put them in a network together. And you'll see why this is important in just a second. And then one thing I do want to mention as well is that you do need a, an iDRAC Express or Enterprise license. So this is something that you're going to have to purchase. And once you purchase it, you'll receive a file. And this file is going to be important for later on in the video. So let's get this started. So first of all, I want to show you how to check what, what type of license you have. So first of all, you're going to want to press F2 uh, during the boot screen. And then we'll go ahead and go into System Setup. You know, pressing F2 will bring us into System Setup. Um, then we want to go ahead and click iDRAC Settings. So we'll give it a second to load here. Uh, but this is going to have a lot of information about just iDRAC. But we want to go ahead and press System Summary. And inside of System Summary, this is where it's going to show what license we have. So, and then as you can see right here, iDRAC license shows express. So that is how you check your iDRAC license and we're going to go ahead and update this or upgrade it to an enterprise license. Upgrading our express license to an enterprise license isn't too difficult, but there's, there's a couple things we got to do before we can do it. So first of all, we need to create IP addresses for our R730 and our alternative system. And we need them to both be in a network together so then we can eventually connect to the iDRAC web interface. So first of all, what we're gonna do is gonna go ahead and set a static IP address on the R730. So um, in system setup, by pressing F2 in the boot menu, we're gonna go ahead back to iDRAC settings we're going to scroll down to network and then we're going to scroll down all the way to IPv4 settings. So we're going to go ahead and disable DHCP and then in the static IP address we're actually just going to go ahead and use the default IP address that um, is preset for iDRAC. We're just going to keep that number in there for the Static gateway, this number should be good too, but you just want to make sure that the first three octets are the same. And this is essentially going to represent the, the router in our network or, you know, the gateway, the entry point. Our static subnet mask, that one should be good. Just keep it at 255, 255, 255, 0. For our DNS server, we're just going to go ahead and throw in just a general uh, DNS server IP address. So 8888, that's going to be Google's primary DNS server. And then 8844 is going to be Google's 
uh, secondary DNS server. If you do have your own DNS server in this network, you can go ahead and use that as well. But for this video, we're just gonna go ahead and use these two. All right, so once all of this is configured, then our static IP address is set for the R730. And then I just recommend giving it a little bit of a reboot in order to get that IP address set in stone. All right, so now that we've set the static IP address on the R730, it's now time to do that on our secondary system. So we're gonna go ahead and get on our laptop here. And I do wanna note that you do not need a Windows system to do this, but we're gonna be using a Windows system for this video. If you have a Linux or a Mac, it is gonna look different, but conceptually it's the same idea. So you wanna to go to your network settings and you wanna configure a static IP address for your system. But like I said, we're gonna be using a Windows system here. So if you have a Windows system, you can just follow along as is. But first of all, what we wanna do is go ahead and go to Control Panel. And in Control Panel, we wanna to go to Network and Sharing Settings. And if you want, you can just go to your, your search bar um, on the taskbar and just type in Network and Sharing Settings or type in Control Panel, whichever one's best for you. So we wanna do Change Adapter Settings on the left side here and then we wanna click on ethernet. So this is just for our ethernet port that we have connected to the switch. And this adapter is what we're going to change the IP on. So we're gonna right click and click properties and then click on internet protocol version four. We wanna go ahead and click use the following IP address. And then this is where we're going to type in the IP address for the laptop. So one thing I do want to note is that the first three octets of your IP address, they must be equivalent to the first three octets of the IP address that we used in the R730, or it will not work. Essentially, when these three octets are matching, it's saying that these two systems are in the same network, and we want them to be in the same network if we want to go ahead and access the iDRAC web interface. So we can just go ahead and use the same subnet mask, and then the default gateway is also going to be the exact same as the one we used on the R730. And then down here for the DNS server, we can see that those values are already in there and they're the same values as what we used on the R730. Now that we have our IP address set on our R730 and on our secondary system, we want to go ahead and go to our web browser and we're going to go ahead and enter in the IP address that we set for iDRAC on the R730. This is gonna go ahead and take us to the web interface. And on the web interface, this is where we can go ahead and have the options to change our licensing. But first, we have to go ahead and log in. And the username and password for the username is gonna be root, and the password will be Calvin, C-A-L-V-I-N, and I'll show it right here. We're gonna do submit, and right here, we have the option to change our default password. If this is a system you're using in your, you know, your business or your environment, your data center, I would recommend changing this. But for simplicity purposes, um, we're going to go ahead and just keep the password as the default. So over on the left side of the screen, we want to go ahead and click the license tab. And over here by license option, there is a little drop down box. In this drop-down box, this is where we're going to import the file that we need. So we're gonna press import. We can go ahead and choose a file. And this is gonna bring up our file explorer. And in the file explorer, we can see right here that we have our license file. So this is the file that we purchased. We're gonna go ahead and import this file and then hit apply. And it says our license was successfully imported. So we're gonna click okay. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pretty much just refresh it. So we'll go ahead and just log out and then we'll log back in. So we'll just type the username and password from earlier, root, and Calvin. We're gonna hit submit. And then I don't know if you noticed, but you could see at the very top of that login form, it did say enterprise and you can see it right here. So we're gonna log away, we're gonna log in completely and at the very top of the screen, you can see where it says enterprise. So we're gonna go back to the license tab. 
So since it does say enterprise at the very top, we can see that we successfully upgraded our express iDRAC license to an enterprise license and importing this file did indeed work. So thank you guys for stopping by. If you learned something from this video, please leave a like and also subscribe. But other than that, you guys have a great day.